Our next guest had a successful career in the entertainment industry, but she realized she was not following her own dreams. Jacqueline Journey had to dig deep to finally live the life she wanted to live. What she learned, she shares with us in her new book, The Divas in the Details. So we're welcoming Jacqueline Journey to the show this morning. Hello there. Hello there. Thank you so much for having me, Deborah. You're I'm welcome. really excited to be back in yeah, Houston. Back home, I love right? it here. I yeah. love it here. All right. Okay. Um, so I said during the break that Kate Winslet, Emma Watson, and Ryan Reynolds all suffer from imposter syndrome. What is imposter syndrome? You know, it's actually fascinating. They coined this term back in 1978, clinical psychologists, and no one really talks about this. It's very prevalent, especially among women. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it describes this constant, persistent fear that you're not good enough, that mm -hmm. at any moment, you're going to be discovered for a fraud. Yeah. And as you mentioned, it affects a lot of very successful people, Kate Winslet, Maya Angelou, Sonia Sotomayor. Well, I, I get it, because there are times for a long time in my career, I go, why did they hire me? I'm going to have to work extra hard so they don't see that I'm really not who they should have hired. Right? Absolutely. And you got to let go of that. You finally let go of that. But you helped build three music and entertainment networks. I and did. then one day you had an epiphany. And what was that epiphany? You know what? I woke up one day and I realized that my life was dictating the next steps in my life, and I wasn't. I'd sort of lost control at that point, and I really needed to make a change. I wasn't following my own passions. I had had so many dreams I wanted to pursue, and I just wasn't doing it, and I couldn't figure out why. So I sat down one day, and I thought, you know what? I'm my own best resource. I've right. spent decades in this industry interviewing and producing live concerts with legends and icons and Grammy winners and Oscar winners and billionaires. Yeah, we had first yeah. accounts from like Taylor Swift, Burt Reynolds, Dennis Quaid, Jacqueline Smith, Billy Bob Thornton, Juliette Lewis, all of them who kind of felt that kind of insecurity as well. Uh, all right, so you came up with these these ways that we can kind of reaffirm what we really are, right? Yes, the nine yeah. divas details. Yeah, so one of them is imitation is suicide. Absolutely. You have to define who you are because if you don't, you're inviting other people and external factors to do it for mm -hmm. you. And I recommend that everyone sit down and literally make a list. What are my personal, professional, romantic, spiritual yeah, for standards? Real. Don't lie to yourself. For real. Yeah. Don't lie to yourself. Write it down and then stick to it because yeah. if you don't set a bar, imagine competing in a high jump. Yeah, exactly. If there's no bar, you really don't know if you've ever succeeded or not. Eat your fears for breakfast. I love this one. Taylor Swift is a perfect example of this, even before she did her second album, Fearless. And with Eat Your Fears for Breakfast, I talk a little bit about imposter syndrome, but also about how we are all plagued with fear at certain mm -hmm. times in our lives. And it's okay, because it makes it you re-examine. Okay yourself. Absolutely. And we have fear that people aren't going to like us, fear yeah. that we aren't good enough, fear of change. That's a big one. And also fear of just complete and utter failure. But a lot of times failure is nothing more than course correction. If yeah. you look at someone like Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx, well, she was supposed to be an attorney, but she failed the LSAT. And she's Girl, famous. I was supposed to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So Sarah said, you know, famously, if I hadn't failed the LSAT, right. there would be no Spanx. Well, we all want our Spanx. Yeah, yeah right. So, right. Firstly, I'm happy you know, she funny failed that the bar. The reason why I felt like I should have been a doctor is I thought that people expected me to do something like that. Yes. And it wasn't, I, I still love medicine, but I, it was external, as yes. you made a point of earlier. Uh, the other thing is, I think we kind of self-explanatory, it's not all about you. You are never above somebody. All right, I want to end with an example from Matthew McConaughey when he came into the studio. I love Matthew McConaughey because he does absolutely personify this diva's detail. The last time that I saw him, he came into our studios for an interview, and he took the time to literally go around the room and shake the hand, make eye contact, introduce himself to every single person on the crew. And you know what? Even the guys who were like, oh, Matthew McConaughey, yeah. you know, all the girls yeah, are crazy yeah. about him. By the end of the interview, they all loved him, and he had diehard fans for yeah. life. And he humanized him, yeah, him as well. He wasn't Every such a celebrity anymore. Now he was right here with us. All right, Jacqueline's book, The Divas in the Details, is available online, and we have a link on our site, greatdayhouston.com. I love it. Even things for confidence, like make eye contact, let person know that you are present and have a strong handshake as well. And she did all that when I met her. All right, <laughs> coming up, hey, Astros pitcher Lance McCullers Jr. and his wife Kara are heavily involved in the Houston community. Find out how they're helping those in the fight against leukemia when we come back.